Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this introduction video about React Router. So to start off, what is routing? And you know that in React, we can render certain components or not based on some conditions. Um, but you might think that a big downside of having everything on one page is that we cannot have separate pages. So if we go, for example, to twitter.com and I click right here on sign up, you will see the URL has changed and the content on the page as well. And that's exactly what we are going to learn in these video series, how we can actually set up routing in our React application. So to start off, we can install React Router DOM, which is a very popular library to handle routing in your React application. So we could say npm i React Router DOM and I'll get back to you when it's downloaded. All right, so right now I got React Router DOM installed and let's start off with actually doing a simple route setup in our app.jsx file. So what I will do, I will import actually this stuff from React Router DOM. So I could say import something from React Router DOM and now the reason why I put it like this, because now if I look for things, it will be auto filled, which will prevent me from making typos. Now what you see right here, I'm importing browser router as router. So this means that I'm importing the browser router function from React Router DOM. However, I say right here, I want to use it as router. So when I say router in my app, it will actually use browser router. And the next thing we are going to import is route, switch, and redirect. And in a couple of minutes from now, you will know exactly what these are doing. So let's first um, start the development build of React. And let's imagine we have two pages in our app. We've got a login page and we have a dashboard page. So now when I save it, you will see login and dashboard. Now let's say that we want to show the login page when we navigate to login and the same goes for dashboard. If we navigate to dashboard, uh, only dashboard, dashboard will be shown. What I can do is import or actually use the router right here. And now I can define a route like this. And I can put login inside of here. And I want this to be shown when we are at that login URL path. So it could say path equals slash login. And now I can do the same for dashboard. So I would say route, which will have a path of slash dashboard. And then we render this in here. So now when I save it, you will see that we have no content showing at all. However, when I navigate to slash login, it will show the login text. And if I navigate to dashboard, it will show dashboard. So that's a pretty simple route setup. Now let's imagine we want to always redirect to the login page whenever um, a user, for example, goes to like a non-existing URL. What we could do, we could say redirect to, and we will redirect to that login route. And now when I save it and I go to, let's say something like right here, it will always redirect me to that login route. But the problem is you will see it that if I navigate to dashboard, it will not work. It will always redirect this to login. So pre to prevent this from happening, we can use the switch statement, which is kind of similar to um, how we know switch statements in, in JavaScript. So what this will do, it will kind of like look through all the route children and it will return 
the very first one it matches with. So if I now go to like a non-existing URL, you will see you get redirected to a login, but I can still navigate to dashboard if I want to. Now, what's important to notice, let's say we want to have like uh, an app header showing always, right? No matter on what page we're at. I could say right here, app header. And when I save it, you'll see that switch statement will work properly fine. However, even though we are in dashboard, we can see dashboard anymore. So always make sure that if we, for example, always want to show this header, we need to set that outside of the switch statement. So right now it will work and the same goes for login. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is the path property. So let's comment out the switch and redirect for now. And let's say we have another route uh, and we only want to show this when, um, for example, for admin login. So we could say admin login. So now whenever I save it and I head over to login admin, you'll see it will show both the login, the content of the login route and the admin login. So in order to prevent this from happening, we can use the exact keyword. So it will say exact path. And that will mean that it will only show when the path is exactly slash login. So now you will see that it will just show admin login without that login content right here. And the last thing I will just redo all the changes um, like this. There we go. So the last thing I'd like to show you is the component property. So usually speaking, we wouldn't do it like this. We would, for example, have a folder with uh, components. And in the components folder, we will have the content of the, uh, yeah, of the route. So I could say app header JSX. And I will just, let's see, we have login JSX. And we've got dashboard that JSX. And I will also put that in here. All right. So now I can actually remove these. And what we could do right now, right here, we could actually render, for example, the app header component. And we could render the login component and here we want to render the dashboard component and as you will see i did not add the h1 and h2 tag so now everything will be in line um but you get the point right we still have the same content right here let's go to dashboard and this to me personally, it might look a little bit messy, especially if you have like a lot of routes. And of course you can add some white space. Um, but what I personally like to do is simply make use of the component property. And then in there, we can actually pass the component like so. So if I will do that for a dashboard as well. And app header can just stay here as is. Now when I save it, it will still work, but I think it's a little easier to read. Now I see we can even clean this up a little bit because we can just do it like this. There we go, will still work fine. And yeah, that was pretty much for the introduction of React Router DOM. And in the next video, we're going to take a look how to use React Router hooks.